Hello, with this video today we're going to be looking into the history and namesakes of one of Starfleet's vessels, this time the lineage of the name Lexington. I will be drawing from substantial extra canonical mentions of ships of the name as it only crops up twice in continuity, once in the original series and a different vessel in the TNG era, mostly around Deep Space Nine. Before that however, let's take a look at some real world vessels to bear the name Lexington. There has been a USS Lexington in existence practically since 1776, which I believe is an important year for the USA. Anyway, it was named after the Battle of Lexington, which I believe is the first skirmish of the American Revolutionary War. The vessel had a rather short tenure during the war, but one laced with combat and took part in the capture of several other ships. In 1777, it was becalmed and then captured by the British on the 19th of September. The second vessel to be named Lexington was named for its prior incarnation, as it were, and it was commissioned in 1826. She policed the seas off California's coast during the gold rush of 1849 and was eventually decommissioned in 1855 and sold in 1860. In 1861, construction began on the USS Lexington, a timber-clad gunboat. It fought in several battles during the American Civil War and seized Confederate vessels. She was eventually decommissioned in 1865 with the ending of the Civil War. In 1917, the USS Lexington II SP-705 was purchased by the American Navy as a patrol boat after being originally constructed in New York 1911. She served as naval coast defence and was then based at Philadelphia. She was decommissioned in 1918 with the close of the First World War. In 1916, Construction had begun on a new battle cruiser, however its construction was altered in 1922 to become an aircraft carrier. This made her one of the first such vessels in the American Navy. Alongside the USS Saratoga, the Lady Lex CV-2 was assigned to develop tactics for this emerging type of warship. She also undertook relief missions, but in 1941 was assigned to the Pacific Theatre of the Second World War. It was then refit and assigned to the Battle of the Coral Sea alongside the Yorktown. The vessel was struck by the Japanese and unrecoverable, so as a result, it was scuttled. Its wreck has been discovered as of 2018. Immediately after its sinking, an Essex-class carrier, originally to be called Cabot, was renamed the Lexington CV-16. It was commissioned in 1943 and took to the same waters as its namesake. In late 1943, it was hit but survived, returning to port for repair. She was reported as sunk by the Japanese. Then Lexington returned to war. In 1944, it was erroneously reported sunk once again, but in actuality it was unharmed by recent combat. She operated as the flagship for several campaigns, and later that year was once again reported as sunk. The Lexington was in reality still fine, and by now had earned the nickname the Blue Ghost after its coloration and reputation for not remaining dead. She was decommissioned at the end of the war and placed in reserve for 10 years. She returned as a training vessel until 1958 for the Second Taiwan Strait Crisis and then operations in the Far East throughout the 1960s. She was rechristened the CVT-16 and became a training vessel in 1969 until her decommissioning in 1991. It is now a museum ship. The first Starfleet era USS Lexington actually predates the Federation and was an NX class launched in 2156 after the initial four NX models. This was in answer to the rising tensions with the Romulan Star Empire. As one of the fastest ships in the fleet, being able to break Warp 5, it was deployed on long-range strikes in the Earth-Romulan War and took part in the aftermath operations of the Battle of Cheron to push Romulan forces back into their own space. As of the formation of the Federation, the vessel was still in service, but like many of the NX class, would have quickly found itself outclassed by the newer technologies of the organisation. 
In the late 2240s, the USS Lexington NCC-1709 was commissioned as one of the new Constitution line of starships. It was under the command of Captain Korolev at the time, but in 2248 to 2253 it undertook a five-year exploratory mission the likes of which the Constitution specialised in. A second mission was undertaken from 2253 to 2258, after the ship was pulled in to be overhauled and refit. Captain Mark Rossu took command after that, followed by Commodore Robert Wesley. By 2267 the Lexington was undergoing repairs at Starbase 11, and a year later it took part in the ill-fated M5 drills. As the dangerous computer system usurped control of the Enterprise and used lethal force during simulated war games, 53 of the Lexington's crew were killed. Not long after this, the Commodore retired from Starfleet. By the 2280s, the vessel had been pulled in again and overhauled, with the latest and largest Constitution refit as her sister ships had been. From this date onwards, it continued to operate alongside the Enterprise in several instances as support for various missions throughout its final years. By this time, the ship had earned a distinguished career, outlasting even the lifespan of the Enterprise NCC-1701, and as of 2290, a new class of starship was being developed, the first of which was the Lexington NX-3092, later rechristened NCC. The Lexington class was effectively a lightweight Excelsior class and could reach a maximum speed of warp 9.95 on the old scale. Despite this, however, that class of vessel did not last as long as the famed Excelsior, and in 2345 there was a new USS Lexington NCC-14427 Excelsior class. This year it held a conference of which Curzon Dax was a participant, and several years later it took part in the skirmish over Altair 6. In the 2350s, that Excelsior was no longer flying, and the Nebula class NCC-30405 had been commissioned in its place. This vessel served a variety of relief missions, ferrying medical supplies, evacuating colonies and aiding in mining disasters. By 2370, the Nebula class was doing what its type did best and was on exploratory missions, periodically docking at Deep Space Nine. Like many Federation ships, however, it was pulled into the Dominion War, and in 2374 its captain, Ebeling, was killed in the Battle of Tira, and command was transferred to the XO Heather Anderson. In the final days of the war, it was acting as a convoy escort in the deeper Federation systems. By 2377, a steam runner class USS Lexington had adopted the name, or maybe it was a Galaxy class. As is quickly apparent, it's unclear when exactly many of these Lexington ships were decommissioned, but in some stories, one took part in repelling a Borg invasion in 2381. The name Lexington in almost every iteration prior to Starfleet's ones, as well as one fictional one, has arisen in a time of war. In 1776, the first Lexington emerges. American Civil War, a Lexington was commissioned. During the Great War, there were two ships of this name, and then in the Second World War, another arose immediately to replace the former. The NX vessel was created during the Earth-Romulan War, but ever since then, the vessels have followed a more exploratory mandate. But whenever there was a war in Starfleet's history, there was a Lexington to fight in it in a variety of roles, support, relief, and combat. So there we go. This is every vessel I could identify in Trek with the name Lexington and the origins of its real counterparts. Thanks for watching this video on another of Star Trek's legacy named vessels. I've been Rick. Thanks again, and goodbye.